In this video we're going to see how to do a goodness of fit test using Excel. So we're going to have to put in our frequency distributions. We're doing example 11.3 and I'm just going to start the table. Number of televisions. And then we'll have the uh, observed frequency. And this is the numbers in the uh, table 11.10, 11.10. All right. And then we have our expected frequencies. Now these are given as percentages, and you may be given both as percentages. You need to use frequency. So to convert percent to frequency, just multiply the percent as a decimal with the sample size. So for us, uh, since we do 10% uh, as 0.1 times 600, gives us our 60. 16% as 0.16 times 696. And we continue in this matter, taking each percent number as a decimal and multiplying it by 600. There we go. All right, and then we want observed minus expected squared divided by expected. So for each one of these we will take the in parentheses the observed frequency minus the expected frequency close parentheses exponent 2 divide by expected frequency and we're going to copy that formula down so it'll do it at each row of the table. So drag that down and then we want to get a total here so we'll do total and, and we can do totals here just to see what happens. Make sure everything works out. This should be 600, right? And then the next one should be 600, yep. And then this one is our, um, sort of our test statistic, our critical value. And we then just need to find the p-value. Since it's almost always a right-tailed test, it doesn't really have a lot of variation. We'll do a, a general one. And this uses the uh, chi-squared distribution, chi dist and you give it this value here and then your degrees of freedom is four because we had uh, five categories degrees of freedom is uh, one less than that and that gives us our p-value yeah that's it so uh, you can see there's kind of a rounded version of that same number, it's about 0 0.00006. So the p-value is clearly less than any alpha that we would reasonably use, and so we end up uh, rejecting the null hypothesis. And by default, the null hypothesis is that the observed distribution is the expected distribution. And the alternative is that it's different. So here we would actually have evidence that the observed distribution, um, which is uh, the distribution of televisions in the western part of the United States, is significantly different from that of all American families in general. So we can make that distinction there. Um, but here mainly focusing on calculation of the p-value, you know the general hypothesis testing procedure. So uh, should be able to 